Alrighty, so the game is called Circus Maximus. And uh, so I'm going to do a quick rundown of the rules and the modifications I did to the rules uh, before we have a game so that people who watch the video can kind of understand what's going on. Each player controlling their chariot rolls a d6 at the start of the turn. So for this guy, we roll a 1. For this guy, we roll a 3. For this guy, we roll a 5. And for this guy, we roll a 4. Now the different chariot types have different speed levels. However, we're going to count all of our chariots as a Zeus a chariot. So they all have the same speed. And so this determines who goes first. So this chariot gets to go first, and this one, and this one, and this one. And then what we do is we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six categories of, of movement. Basically, each category of movement adds a d6 to their move. And the move is quite simple. So let's start with this guy. So we want him to go from zero, which is zero dice, to category one, which is one dice. So one d6. And he rolls two. So he rolls, he moves now, two inches forward. Four. The next guy here, he rolls a dice. He rolls six, so he gets to move six inches. Now this guy, he rolls six as well. Now, <clears throat> what you can do then is you can actually transition into another lane, as long as you have the movement and the clearance from an opposing chariot to do it. Your first change is free. But for every lane change after the first, you have to take a skill check at the end. So you don't have to take a skill check for every lane change, just one skill check if you do more than one lane change. The other thing I added to the rules, because originally the rules used a printout piece of paper with a checkerboard pattern on it, that you would move your paper models around to basically, instead of measuring in inches, you move them squares. Well, I wanted to make it bigger and use my kelp models. Um, and I wanted to make it a bit more dynamic as well. A bit more like how war games are. And so I made it so that they can move. There's no squares and they move along in actual inches in their lines. But they have to. Do, they do have to stay in the lane unless they're making a specific move. And they can't move through each other. So you can't move through an opponent. So this guy now moves. So he's in a bit of a conundrum. See, so he's got a guy in front of him. If he doesn't roll high enough, so so when he rolls, rather, he's going to have to move out of the way to go around him, or roll low, because he cannot move less than what you rolled. So he rolls a four, which puts him into the back of this guy. So instead, he's going to have to move to here. And that's the end of the first turn. Basically, we keep working our way through these rolls until someone wins wins the race. So I'll keep going for a couple of turns to show you how it all plays out. So we'll start here. This guy. Oh, one. Not oh, good. This one. Oh. This one. Five. And this one. Six. Beautiful. All right. So. We'll start here with this guy. He's going to go up to two, um, uh, category two. So now he gets to roll 2d6 for his move. So he rolls an eight. So what he's going to do is he's going to come over here. But because he made more than one lane change, he now has to make a skill test. So you do 2d6 and add modifiers. So which is 2d6 and he did two drifts so it's plus two and there was no obstacles so that's fine and we roll our dice okay so skill of seven so If it's 
equal to or less than. So I move two spaces, so it's plus two, but I rolled a four, which is only a six. He's skill seven, so he passes. He makes his makes his check. So this guy now, let's see how far he moves. Oh, 11. Beautiful. So 11. Eleven will put him about here. And he'll have to make his skill check. And it's the same as before. Oh, but he fails. So let's see what happens. Double ones. Out of control. But the driver recovers and suffers no effects. That's lucky. This guy? Ten. So they'll get him five. And then five. And finally, this guy. Six. Oh. So. The best case scenario is he's going to hit the back of this guy. So let's see what happens with collisions. Alright, so we do a skill check. Right. So we do a skill check with the modifiers. Um, no attack, no drifts, and there's one obstacle, so it's a plus two. So I have to roll a five or less, otherwise he's going to have something bad happen. And he rolls a three, so nothing happens. Now normally they can move past, but he doesn't have the movement to go past that guy. So, instead, he just stays behind. And that's the end of their turn. So we move to the next turn. This guy. One again. That's unlucky. This guy. A three. This guy. Five. And the other guy. Another five. So, uh, they're going to roll off again. So this guy. Roll again. Two. And this guy. A four. So this guy goes first, this guy goes second. Now it's because it's turn three, we can increase our speed, the speed to category three. So 3d6 movement. So this guy. Nine. Now he's only moving one, one um, lane across, lane drift across, and so that means that he doesn't have to worry about doing a check. Now this guy, three d six, nine, eleven. So that'll put him there. <coughs> this guy. Oh, 15. So that would put him right around in front. And so I'm going to take a risk with this guy. And I'm going to push him forward. I'm going to do a skill check to see if he can dodge his way around. Potentially get in front. No, he fails. So what happens? So he takes one hit to his health, and he drifts to the right. Which means we have to take another skill check, because he just crashes into this guy. A skill check that he fails, what happens? A four. So he hits this guy, and then he goes again. So he takes another hit to his health. Oh no, no, just drifts one rock, one rock go to his right. So this guy's obviously jumped out of his way in the last minute. Alright. And finally, this guy in the back, the unlucky fella. 18. Wow. So once again that will put him in front. So I'm gonna do it do it again. A six, so he fails. And a nine. And he drifts one to the 
left and hits the wall. And now he gets knocked back down. So because he's hit the wall, or he's come off the track, that means his speed goes down to category one. So he's now only one day six move. And he takes three hits to his health. Let's start with him. Four. This guy, out the front, in the lead. A four as well. We'll have a test for that. This guy. A six. This one. Four. This one. Three. Okay, so this guy goes second. This guy goes first out of the two. All right, so let's go here. So he's category three, and <clears throat> he's now in the bend. So he doesn't have to take a test because he's in the bend. But because he now has the he has the option now to go to level four, category four, which is four d six movement. However, going around the bend on a category four means that he would have to take a test. To see if he falls off the track or not. So I think we should probably play it safe and just stick to our 3D6 movement. So let's go. 3D6, what's that? 4, 6, 13. So 13 inches. Don't have to be super 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 accurate yeah. um, this guy 3d6 what's that nine so you can really see anyone who knows racing would know that and I, I honestly like this from playing the game that the inside track is where you want to be to get the best speed. Uh, now this guy. So he's on 1d6. And he rolls a 1, which is pretty sad. So we'll just plop him forward a little bit. Now this guy. He's category 3. But he's behind. So, you know what? I'm going to go category 4. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to risk it. Risk it for the biscuit. 15. bring you right around to here. I could I could drift. However, he's about to take a without normally without a penalty, but because he's gone to level four, it would deduct from his skill test he's about to make. So his skill test is seven, so it's unmodified at the moment. Six, he passes, so he made it. He pulled it off. Now normally, I wouldn't force a second test. So maybe if you're only half or a third of your way into the corner, I would say do another test for your next turn if you want to stay at that speed. But being at that last third or last quarter, whatever you want to say it is, you sort of pass the point of danger. So we just uh, use, your, use your noggin, use common sense to decide that. All right, so we get up to the next turn. Let's start here. Four. Here. One. Ooh. Here. Two. And here. Five. Well, that's that's pretty cinematic. That's pretty cinematic. So I think with this guy here, we should go to level five on the speed. So, let's go, boom, boom. So it's this guy, this guy, this guy. Right, so, five dice, five D6. That is six, 10, 18 inches. So, oh, I've got to be excited there. So he moves all the way to here. And we now bring his speed up to five. This guy, he, he is level one. So we're gonna bring him to level two. And he 
rolls a six. And that'll just get him back around the corner to here. And he's now at level two. This guy. He's at level three. We might as well go to level four. Whoa. So that's 12 plus seven. So 19. Nice one. And I think he'll probably lane change as well. And then finally, this guy. So he'll go level four as well. So what's that? That's 10, 14. So is he. Alright, and that's the turn. Things are starting to speed up. Let's go with this guy first. He's a three. This guy, he's a six. That's alright. This guy, three. This guy, five. So between these two, this guy, a six. This guy, a four. So you can become number four now. So, we're category five here. So let's do that. So that's six, 12, 15, 21 inches. And he's gonna play it safe. He's only gonna go. one lane over. Now this guy. So he should go to category 5. I mean there's no reason not to. So, 5 dice. And, oh that's not very good. So 10, 15 inches. So that puts him there. See, what's going to happen now is because they didn't go down the level, they're not going to be able to cut enough speed by the time they enter in here to avoid taking a test. So let's not move this guy down, up one, let's keep him on level four, so that by the time he gets around the ring, gets around to go around the corner, he might not have to take a test and that could put him in the lead. So let's go. Level four. Oh, actually, we're over here, sorry. So this guy's level two, we'll go to level three. So three dice. Uh, what's that? 11 inches. Not too bad. Now, this guy. Three. What's that? That is 11 as well. So, right on his tail. That's the end of that turn. Let's do again. Starting from the front. This guy, three. This guy, two. This guy, five. And this guy in the back, five. So, let's go here. And then we'll do a roll off. So green is the guy in the back. So, you go down to a four. Demoted. So over here. Now, they're not going to be able to avoid going into the corner. They're not going to be able to avoid their skill check going into the corner. And they're level 5. So I'm not going to bother going down. Because they're not going to save anything. So let's go... Let's go big. Let's try to use up all our high numbers now. So that we get low ones next time. Could really use those double ones on the next one though. So what's that? 10, 16. So I reckon we go three inches. Generally speaking, I count it takes, you have to have at least three inches of movement to do a lane change. So he can do 13 moves now. So he's gonna come right around the corner and end up right there. See what happens to him. A six. Let's check our skill tests, Charles. Doesn't look good. But would you believe it? He passed, so it's only plus one. 
for changing changing uh, changing lanes. He's skill seven, so it's, you've got to get a seven or less. So he passes. Uh, this guy now. So four dice. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go down a level. We go to three. And we rolled. We rolled a uh, an eleven. Now we have a problem. He can't move around this guy without hitting him. So he's going to have to take a skill check. Which he fails. What happens? Oh, I don't know. He actually falls back one move. Three inches. Generally I count one move as three inches on this, on this situation. It would be unrealistic for him to go all 11 inches backwards. Now, this fella here, he's level three. I'm gonna take him to level four because I don't think he's in danger of getting to the, um, the turn just yet. So let's go, level four, four dice. Can he pull back at least a uh, second or a third placing? So that's uh, 12. Now finally this guy. So he can't shed enough speed to not take a skill test into the corner. So he's just gonna do it. He gets a 16. So we're gonna go eight to here. And then we're gonna go, yep. Basically eight to behind him. And we've gotta take a skill check. He's going into a corner at high speed. And he passes. Wonderful. Alright, and we start again. It's almost the end of the game. We're only going to do one lap for this tutorial. I'm not sure how many laps we would even normally do. In a game, I guess it just depends on my opponent and I. So, let's roll for this guy. Up in the lead. A six. That's fantastic. This guy. A three. That's actually good for him as well. This guy. A one. Unlucky. He's unlucky. His, his bad luck's coming back. Oh, actually, no, it was that guy who was bad luck, wasn't it? Oh, and yeah, he's not that much more lucky. Slightly. Only slightly more lucky. So this guy here. Five dice. That's a lot. So that's 10, 15, 18, 19 inches. So that puts him way over the finish line. Well, actually, not way over the finish line. It puts him over the finish line. Look at me, getting all excited. This fella. Mm, not as good. Uh, what's that? 11 plus 4. So, 15. Oh, he doesn't even make it over the finish line. This guy here. I don't even know if he's going to make it. He doesn't even make it to the corner yet. And finally, that guy. With his four dice. 11, 12, 15. 15 inches. There we go. And so that's basically how the game works. My slight modifications to the rules, like using inches rather than blocks, um, and some slight modifications to drifting. Um, combat wasn't shown, but it's not that complicated. It's just a simple skill test.